I would like to say one thing to everyone that is listening that doesn't understand the game of hockey. This is not an ordinary hockey game. Stanley Cup overtime. Yes, indeed, it's not over till it's over. That game one year ago tonight, remembered fondly by Pat LaFontaine, not so fondly by Bob Mason, but that game one year ago is the furthest thing from the minds right now of the Washington Capitals and the Philadelphia Flyers. Now is the moment. Stanley Cup overtime, game seven, Patrick Division semifinals on tap. In just a moment, we'll be going back to the Cap Center in our intermission. Mike Emmerich will talk to the backup referee tonight, Terry Frazier. Welcome to overtime of the seventh game of the Patrick Division Stanley Cup playoff series between the Washington Capitals and the Philadelphia Flyers. This is ESPN's Road to the Cup, night number seven across the USA. And what hockey we've seen tonight from Philadelphia and Washington tied at four going into overtime. Meanwhile, the New Jersey Devils tonight are sitting at home in the Garden State and watching with their feet up, maybe having some pretzels and a beverage, watching to see who they will meet in game one of the Patrick Division finals Monday night. Another man who's also afforded the luxury in this case, as long as Don Koharski stays healthy, of sitting and watching this great hockey display is the backup official, the backup referee, Kerry Frazier. And he's live at the Cap Center now with our Mike Emery. Mike? Well, Tom, this man's work began during the warm-up in our game tonight. Now, as a backup official, do you have an official responsibility when you come as a backup? Yes, we do, Mike. We're uh, in charge of uh, observing the warm-up between the two teams. Uh, last year, there were some situations that uh, became, uh, the players became involved with each other, and it's our job now to uh, observe and supervise. And in the event that something does happen between the teams, uh, we report to the referee that's working the game, and. Uh, if it's serious enough, uh, they can be eliminated from participating. Well, I know you were very close to the glass at the time. We saw you going over the top of the glass and dropping into the penalty box. Uh, can you share with us what you saw? Because we turned and really just saw the cluster of players. Well, I think I just about broke a rib going over the glass. When you're five foot seven, it's a long drop over that glass. But uh, I, uh, of course, you know about that yeah. being five foot seven. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got down there and, and was able to disperse the players. Uh, there was an exchange of uh, errant pucks. Uh, one hit Mr. Hextall when he was doing a stretch at the red line, and he returned the puck uh, to the uh, Washington end, and uh, the players gathered and. And, of course, that's why the, uh, the official is to be there to observe. I went down over the glass and, and was able to uh, disperse the crowd just with some verbal commands. So. Well, I know one of the subjects of conversation during the course of this playoff year, and you've heard it on ESPN, and I'm sure those of you who've watched hockey in other cities have heard it too, is the consistency from the first period all the way through. Matter of fact, we had four overtime power plays in one game this year. Now, in, in this third period tonight, late, there were a couple of, of question marks that were held. Does a referee have a certain reticence to give a power play late in the seventh game, knowing that that call may wind up deciding the series and eliminating a team? Well, Mike, you certainly want any penalty that you call at that stage to be a good penalty. Uh, now, that certainly doesn't mean that we allow everything to go. We have a standard this year that we've adhered to over the course of the regular season and so far in overtime in the playoffs. And... Uh, we categorize penalties. Uh, you're certainly going to call a scoring opportunity that's been taken away, an obvious infraction, or a major, a flagrant uh, stick infraction, that sort of thing. Uh, the minor uh, clutching and grabbing, you certainly uh, want to make sure that it's, it's a very flagrant situation at this stage before you would call that sort of thing. We're certainly glad to have you back officiating games. We know that health-wise, this wound up being a difficult year at the start. And you had to really crash in a lot of games in a short span of time, didn't you? Well, I worked 39 games in two and a half months, so I certainly uh, was back on a, on a very torrid pace uh, once I was able to get back health-wise. And I feel great now. I feel very strong, and I'm skating as well as I ever have. And we'll be watching for him in the subsequent rounds in our coverage on ESPN, Tom. All right, Mike Emmerich, and give our best to Kerry Frazier there at the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. Yes, he did have a very busy pregame skate tonight. Thankfully, there was nothing like what we saw last year between the Flyers in Montreal and Cooler heads have prevailed. We've seen some great hockey tonight. And we'll be back to take a look at the third period highlights in a moment. One goal for Philadelphia in the third period. One goal for Washington. We're tied at four. Headed to overtime. Zamboni has done its work. The Washington Capitals are taking their warm-up lap before sudden death overtime. Let us show you how this game came to overtime. We enter the third period tonight. 
tied at three. And the Washington Capitals, who had scored three unanswered goals to tie the game, got the first goal of the third period. Gary Galley over to Dale Hunter on the power play. Four to three caps. But a couple of minutes later, the Flyers win the faceoff. Back to Brad Marsh, who winds up a screen in front of Pete Peters. It goes untouched between the pads to tie the game at four. And that's where we stood for the remainder of the third period. That goal by Marsh came with 6.21 gone in the third, and we're still tied at four. Stanley Cup, sudden death overtime, game seven. Patrick Division semifinals, we're set for action now. Here's Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement. Thank you, Tom. The goaltenders have been such a key to not only this series, but this game. Let's look at some numbers. Here's what the Warriors have done tonight. They have faced 32 for Hextall and 30 for Peters. Four from out far, from back at the blue line. The tough saves, just about 50% for both of them. Hextall has handled the puck far more than Pete Peters. He wanders more, but you know what? His up ice moves, really, 11 is not a big number of up ice moves. To me, that tells you that Ron Hextall has pulled back and tried to play within himself a little more tonight, possibly given the fact that he came into this game a little bit on shaky ground. Really hasn't had his best performances in games five and six, but he's been there when he's had to be tonight. Here's a look at the scoring. Two gritty performers. Hunter broke the tie. Marsh locked it up again. This is the seventh sudden death overtime game for Pete Peters. He had two wins with Boston, two losses during his stay with Philadelphia, and had two losses as a Washington Capitol, both of those in 86 to the Rangers. It's the third overtime game for Ron Hextall. He won in game one against Montreal last year and lost in game two in the finals against Edmonton. And a shot went off the trapper of Pete Peters from Howe. He thought he had that one, and he didn't. In the first four seconds of sudden death, nearly sudden death, Langway checked by Dave Poulin. Starting away with it is Pavanka. It's a three on two. Pavanka with Gustafson on his left. But the play was offside going in, so it couldn't be worked to the right to Christian. Boy, he was ready for it, wasn't he? I always wonder, why doesn't it go to the man that's ahead, especially in overtime? You know back checkers are coming as fast as they can. Pavanka decided to, well, I'll just get across the blue line and then make a play over to Dave Christian. But if I'm in overtime, I know I want Dave Christian to have it. If I'm playing center, he has scored some huge goals in his career. Ryan Murray saw the justice in game six that Christian, who had been so involved in the previous games, did not have a goal to show for it. But in game six, he got one. Peter Zessel on the faceoff with Ridley. And it is one back. Marsh to take it. We are in sudden death overtime at Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. The puck comes to Gartner. Gartner fires one off the stick of Hextall. Pinching is Stevens. Can he keep play moving? It rolls along to Ridley. Wrapped up by Samuelson. Converging on that one is Marsh, and he scales it out of play. 47 seconds into period four. We'll talk with Brad Marsh. I wonder what part of the stick. Was it the shaft that he got on that one? I think it hit the handle of his stick above his hand. It's happened a lot to both these teams. A great deal has been said about the Capitals when they've had their backs to the wall. But it's been that way for the last four nights. They won not only game five, but six. Ridley again poised for the draw with Craven. Trying to get loose for the backhander is Gartner, but wedged off by Howe. Shell Samuelson ahead. Up the wing. It's Craven with a shot off the stick of Pete Peters. Miller booms into Samuelson. They continue to work, and the pass goes back to Zendel, who flopped one wide. Reaching for it, Craven, but there first was Larry Murphy. And the puck scaled back ahead, and Gartner's trying to pull loose. He's taken down on the play. There'll be a penalty coming up, and a power play in sudden death overtime for the Washington Capitals. It had to be done. And it had to be done by Mark Howe. What a guy that they don't want going off right now. He is obviously their key back there. So Mark Howe 
ends up having to hook Mike Gardner here. Now, Gardner will go down to make it look worse than it is, but there is Gardner pulling away. He finally says, hey, listen, I'm getting cut off anyway. I'm going to go down. Tough play by Mark Howe and a tough call because Hextall is out. Watch the left of your screen. There is Hextall. Now, does he get to the puck first if Mark Howe lets him go? Howe couldn't take the chance. Pulled him down. Don Koharski makes the call. Getting pretty tense. This is the eighth time in this playoff round that a team has had a power play in sudden death overtime. In this series, it's the first time. Gustafson, Christian, and Pavanka. The hot tickets are out right now for the Capitals. Murphy to Stevens. Over to Christian, and he fired it wide. Rebound, ricochet, off escape, punched away, centering pass, save made by the sprawling Samuels, and another shot, and that one blocked away by Hextall. Christian with two pinball chances. Now working for another as he hands to Stevens, and then over to Murphy. Across to Dave Christian again. Centers one off the side of the net. Loose puck and banging into Hextall was a capital, but he had the puck held, and a stoppage to play. And oh man. Christian had two good opportunities. He sure did. And Shell Samuelson may have just saved the season for the Philadelphia Flyers. Obviously, they'd have to pull it out. Well, he sure saved the season for them with one stop on Christian. Hextall held his ground right at the end. The puck ended up, ended up lodged right against the post. Look at this pass right through. Samuelson deflects it to Christian and then makes the save himself. He goes down and blocks. I think Hextall got the second save. A minute 34 to go on the power play. All that furious action and only 26 seconds have gone off the penalty clock. The winner of this plays New Jersey on the winner's home ice beginning Monday. Sam Rosen and Phil Esposito will have that one for you. We'll open things up out west. Calgary and Edmonton on Tuesday at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. But right now, the focus on this big one. Gustafson on the draw. Stevens, a drive, his stick shatters, and the puck kicks back to Murphy. Hurries it along, hoping for Pavanka. Wedged off by Marsh, who's able to push it away. But back now for Murphy's shot, and it went off the glass. Capitals recover back in their own zone. Scott Stevens will just take it all the way behind. A minute 15 to go on this power play. Teams tied at four in period number four of game seven. The Flyers make the Capitals chase it again. Tockett, Samuelson, Marsh, and Sutter are the four for Philadelphia. Pavanka gives to Larry Murphy. Murphy strips one back now for a shot by Christian. Backhander by Pavanka, poked in the air by Samuelson, and fanning on one was Hextall, but Marsh helped out. Sutter sends it back down, and Pete Peters is waiting. Nearly gave it up to Sutter. Back up now comes Ridley. Poked away by Samuelson, but Ridley follows up to Hatcher. Hatcher is Christian tried to shake loose in front. Lost the puck to the checking of Tuckett, and again the Capitals have to go back. 25 seconds to go, power play. Stevens takes a look to Ridley. Carries it along himself. Down he goes on the hook, beats to Ridley in front. Gardner hit the post, scramble in front. They hit the glass with a shot. Incredible. And the puck turned back out. And here is Brian Crump on a breakaway. Save. Another shot. Save. Made on the play by Peters. Man, oh man, oh man. Where do you want to start? <laughs> Point me in the right direction. Well, where do you want to start with these replays? Prop after the post by Gardner is stymied by Pete Peters. The rebound goes right back to Prop, and it looks like Peters has it in his glove. He has it in his trapper. And at the other end, Ridley back to Gardner. Ding dong, right off the post. The rebound, oh, right over Hunter's stick. Gardner ends up face first on the ice. I don't know how much either man slept last night. I don't know the effects of pressure on them, the pressure of a seventh game. Well, but are they ever showing 
skills and the goal tonight. And a little bit of luck, like that shot on the post, sure doesn't hurt much either. Do we have to be here? Do we just take our headsets off and watch this? I mean, this is taking care of itself. And you know that the Devils are sitting home. Jim Schoenfeld, I know you guys are watching, saying, hey, boys, play all night. Play till Sunday at noon. We'll just sit here and relax and cleanse our rooms. Hunter loses, tipped by Howe. Hunter with a second effort, puck chipped back out again by Brad Marsh. Teams are back at full strength. Through all of that lunacy, the Flyers were able to kill off the power play. Marsh floats it back to Howe. A pass tipped by Tim Kerr. Lays it ahead, but too far for Eklund. Pete Peters out to swing it along. Kerr tried to step by. It's held by Crossman, but outside the line, and so offside is called. A minute and one seconds. Three shots. That doesn't include the one off the post by Mike Gardner. Man, you got to like the Devils' chances in game one sitting at home. We've talked during this playoffs of how big an advantage it would be, especially in the Packer division, because the games have been so tough, of winning a series in fewer than seven games. Well, there were only two series in the Packer division. The Devils got by the Islanders in six. Keep in mind, Monday night is when the teams will go at it for the Patrick Division Championship. One of these two teams and the Devils in those precious days that the Devils are having right now to sit back and relax a little bit. You saw the remarkable calm of Brian Murray. One of his players, Kevin Hatcher, lays it back into Philadelphia territory. Shell Samuelson, who has made some big blocks in sudden death overtime, saw one blocked that time by Rod Langway. It is glassed by Hatcher, kicks to Langway, able to thread it through, and up the wing comes Gartner with another chance. Gartner over for oh. a Lundstrom and a strong save made by Hextall. What a save. Ridley watched by Howe. Along now to Gartner. Locked up by Samuelson. Sundstrom pops one. It hops over the glass and into the seats. And Hextall has robbed Sundstrom. And Mike Gartner must be checking his legs for snake bite, the type of opportunities he's been involved in. There's no question that Hextall knows he's in this type of situation. Well, I say that, he didn't react to it. I'm saying to myself, Hextall had to read or at least feel the pass coming. But he doesn't even move. Watch Hextall and time when he moves. There goes the pass. Only then does he move, and does he move. He moves perfectly. If Sundstrom gets it up a little higher, he gets it over him. Sundstrom did make the right play by getting it up. He just didn't get it up high enough. What a save. Perfect feed by Gardner, who'd gone wide on Mark Howe. Well, it's, you know, Tom mentioned deja vu, and you sit here saying, oh, come on. I mean, last year was a different time. Sure, we're in overtime one year later. But remember the saves that Mason and Kelly Rudy made in that hockey game? Peters has robbed Brian Prop twice, once on the original shot, once in his own rebound. Hextall, well, you just saw what he did. 37 shots by Washington, 33 by Philadelphia. It could be the next one, or we could be a long ways off. Melody with a shove on Pavanka. Meanwhile, Murray Craven, about to take this draw, goes for a little bit of skate. Capitals with the edge in that department. Number of interest, but right now the next one could be the biggest one of the night. Stevens has pulled back in and gets it from the faceoff. Shoveled, but already having dropped back was Gary Galley. And Galley hammers it back in and caught a couple of men in the zone. Somebody might be saying, well, why was Galley not up there? Anytime Scott Stevens goes in like that, this is overtime. You gotta play safe, you gotta back out. Scott Stevens, I think, was hoping for something that was unrealistic for Gary Galley to hold his ground while he's trying to stick handle by people. Normally, Stevens is out there with Larry Murphy, and right now they're just uh, checking on their communications just then. Galley, of course, wants to play it safe. Boy, did you see Shell Samuelson's mouth? Blood streaming out of it. When you walk into a locker room at this time of a hockey season, you see cuts, abrasions, stitches, ice packs, ace bandages. And it's a wonder that some of these guys can make it to the ice surface, but night after night they do, and they play through it all. They play with blood streaming out of open cuts on their faces. When you get to be in a situation like this with overtime, you wait to get stitched up until later. Markow takes from Hextall, glides ahead, hands to Poulin, connects with Tim Kerr. Kerr with a shot that ricocheted off Scott Stevens. Peters leaves, and it is thrown around by Murphy. 
taken by Dave Christian. Christian with two of the better chances in sudden death overtime. Pavanka throws one off the glove of Hextall and pops away. Pavanka booming back in along with Gustafson there. Thrown in front by Christian and the puck came across the goal. Now Stevens is shot and that one held by a crumbling Hextall. 14-47 to go in sudden death overtime. It's still 4-4. You know, I think the coolest player I've ever seen in overtime might be Gustafson. This is him along the boards. He sized up Dave Poole, and Gustafson uses his body so well. He waited till the last second to lean into Poole, and that's how he freed the puck up, got it through, all the way through. There's Michael Pavanka, who'd been taken down in front by Samuelson, and Stevens pinched in as he's done so many times tonight and rifled one right into the midsection of Ron Hextall, but Gustafson is so cool out there. He doesn't waste an ounce of energy. He'll get his, re his uh, energy recharged as he comes to the bench now. Some of you might be joining us on ESPN right now, anticipating the scheduled program, which was a truck pull tonight. Because of the length of the game, that will be canceled, but stay with us. If you've never seen a hockey game before, you're catching on to one of the finest that we've seen in quite some time the hockey pole boy is it ever best of seven the two teams are tied they forced a seventh game they were tied through 60 minutes we took a full-fledged intermission and now we're playing the first sudden death overtime it can go a lot longer than that stay with us for this off the face off bobby gould goes after it flips one through how samuelson takes his man hunter centers backhander answered by Bobby Gould shot. Puck laid back in by Poulin. Tapped away by Stevenson. Murphy hustles to play. Locked up by Sinisato. Craven comes in as well. Better chances in the overtime have been Philadelphia's. Bobby Gould hoping to generate another one. Starts ahead with Hunter pulling up on the right. Wrist one. Stick save made by Hextall. And the rebound crack back up now by Murray Craven. Craven denied at the line. Has to follow up and gives up to Larry Murphy. Breaking is Hunter. Three times in his career has scored a sudden death overtime winner. Make it four. Ron Hexall needed one more. One more 10 bell save to keep this game alive. And he came very close to it. Put on a breakaway right up the middle. The man that has the heart, well, just about as big as this Capitol Center, Dale Hunter, puts it by Ron Hexall. And there you see Pete Peters. Congratulating and obviously distraught Ron Hextall. And there is Mike Gardner, who was stymied so many times in this series by Ron Hextall. But the Washington Capitals, to their credit, have hung in and hung in all the way to what we have right now. The ceremonial handshake, which will send the Washington Capitals Monday night in the Packers Division Finals on to meet the New Jersey Devils gallant effort by both teams sweeps of philadelphia in 84 and the islanders in 86 have been long forgotten here 
what these fans, some of whom wore black armbands before game five, recall, is going up 2-0 in a best of five with the Islanders in 85 and going out three straight. Being up 2-1 in a best of seven with the Rangers in 86 and going out three straight. Being up 3-1 on the Islanders last year and going out three straight. This year, they were the ones down. They gave away the fourth game. They led 4-1 in the last nine minutes. Remember that, lost in overtime, but they came back. They out hit the Flyers in game five. They humiliated Philadelphia in the spectrum 7-2 two nights ago. And tonight, before a full house of fans who are ready to resume their cynicism or drill to a comeback based on one score of one game, there it is. Capitals 5, Flyers 4. Who do you pick as Hartford Insurance Player of the Game? Well, it didn't really matter what he did during the game, and it wouldn't have mattered. We knew whoever was going to score the overtime goal would be our Hartford Insurance Player of the Game. Dale Hunter, number 32 of the Washington Capitals, is in fact the Hartford Insurance Player of the Game. Because of his overtime goal here at the Cap Center, we will be showing you more Capitals hockey and the proud Flyers end their season. We were with them all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals in the seventh game last year. It just was not in the cards for the Flyers this year. Question mark turns to an exclamation point here in Landover. Let's go back to Tommy. All right, Mike Emmerich, thank you very much. Our seven-up play of the night, there can also be no doubt about it. The series winning goal, Dale Hunter gets by the Flyer defense. Hextall gets a piece of it, but it wasn't enough. Dale Hunter, his fourth sudden death overtime winner in his career. The Capitals beat the Flyers on the play of the night. They are still partying at the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. You would think a rock group is in town, like the Grateful Dead or somebody like that, the way the crowd is going on and on. But you know what? Who can blame them? The Washington Capitals fans have had a lot of misfortune over the years, but now they can celebrate. And our Mike Forrest is with the star of the game, Dale Hunter. Mike? That's right, Dale Hunter. Dale, was that the biggest goal had to be in your entire career? Yeah, it was. You coming back like we did, you know, and we're down 3 nothing in this game and come back and win in overtime, it's the biggest throw I've, I've had in hockey. Talk to me about the winning goal. How did it develop? Well, I was late coming out of my zone, and I seen Hatchie pick it up at the blue line there, and I, I circled it into the middle, and I knew, I, I knew he'd seen me, and he hit me with a good pass, and I was right in on him then. Hextall had been magnificent in overtime. Did you have in mind what you wanted to do to him? I didn't know until the last second. I, I made a little deke, and he opened up to the legs a little bit, and I, I put it in there. New Jersey next. Well, I worry about that uh, on Monday. Okay, with the hero of the game, Dale Hunter, Mike Forrest, back to you, Tom. All right, Mike Forrest, live at the Cap Center, Atlanta, over Maryland, with Dale Hunter. An incredible statistic, in case you didn't know it, when Mike Emmerich said at the end of that game, that is the fourth, count it, the fourth time that Dale Hunter has won a Stanley Cup overtime game with a goal. And that big trade now that the Washington Capitals made with the Quebec Nordiques, where Clint Malarchik came down, and really was the bellwether in goal during the regular season for Brian Murray's club. And then, of course, Dale Hunter, who is the heart and soul and the guts of this team. You talk about getting a monkey off your back. The Washington Capitals tonight got a gorilla off their back. And Brian Murray, their head coach, who's been the subject of so many rumors of his demise, can now smile at the achievement of his club. And now all they have to do is get a day's rest and play the New Jersey Devils. Not an easy task at all. The Devils come, will come flying in on Monday night to the Cap Center. Our final score in overtime, the Washington Capitals 5 and the Philadelphia Flyers 4. The Capitals win the series four games to three. Now, Monday night, join us as the road to the Cup continues. It's game one of the Patrick Division finals between the New Jersey Devils and the Washington Capitals. Airtime, 7.30 Eastern time from the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern time, it'll be game number one of the Smythe Division finals between the Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers. Every night, there's a Stanley Cup playoff game. You'll see one, and in some cases, more than one, right here on ESPN. Thanks for being with us on a truly memorable night. The only way that uh, the Orioles are going to win is to send Frank Robinson up to the plate. <laughs> that's the only, that's that's right. the only shot they have. On to the NHL now, where seven opening round Stanley Cup playoff winners were waiting for an eighth. Both Washington and Philadelphia skated their blades off, trying to complete the party. It came down to the seventh and final game in their Patrick Division matchup, with the Flyers looking to history to get them by, and the Caps looking away from history to get them by. In a raucous Cap Center in Landover, Maryland, late in the first period, it's a uh, little major penalty time here because Grant Ledyard is going to uh, spear Rick Tockett. Well, at any rate, the Flyers on the move. They pass it around, and uh, the puck is put in. Tim Kerr and the Flyers lead it early, 1-0. We look at it again. Craven to Kerr. 
And it kind of deflects in off uh, a skate of the Caps, and it's 1-0 Flyers. Early second period, the same score. Shell Samuelson with a blast of the point. Pete Peters will make the stop, but Brian Propp is there on the rebound. So Kerr and Propp, the old line. Guys for the Flyers put them up 2-0. A little over a minute later in the second period, Mark out to Tim Kerr. And it goes back to Howe. And Howe will shoot three minutes into the second period. It's 3 nothing Flyers. And the cap center was quiet. But boy, did they wake up when Dale Hunter crosses over to Gary Galley. And he will rip it past Ron Hextall. And it's a 3-1 to one game. A minute later, Mike Ridley pushes it over to Kelly Miller. And he's at the doorstep and puts it home at 3-2. to two. Late second period, Kevin Hatcher having some sort of series with a cannon aiding blast. Ties it at three at the end of two. Early third period, Gary Galley to Dale Hunter. And for the first time in the game, the Capitals had the 4-3 lead. But a couple of minutes later, the Flyers win the faceoff. The defenseman, Brad Marsh, lines it up and scores. So that was about 13 minutes to go. And then they went to overtime. And here is the winner. Dale Hunter in the overtime splits the defense and beats Hextall. And so, Washington coming from behind. You thought they were dead. Forget it. It's the Caps that are moving on. The Flyers moving out in overtime. The Caps win at 5-4, coming back from that 3-1 deficit in games. And so the Capitals move on to the next series in which they will have home ice advantage against the New Jersey Devils. And I'll tell you, in the Patrick, boy, what a change we've seen because Washington is not looking at the Islanders, and they love that. And meanwhile, the Devils have arrived. So the Patrick upside down, the way the playoffs have gone, the Flyers and the Islanders, they're not around for the Patrick Division Finals. That's our first game here on ESPN Monday at 7.30. The other playoffs, as we're now to the round of eight, the Bruins and the Canadians. World War II, folks, I believe it's 18 straight series. The Canadians have beaten the Bruins. You talk about a monkey on their back. I think that's a whole zoo. And so Boston will have to go into the forum and try and split early to try and uh, get things going in that series. The always humorous Norris division may have a very good matchup. I, I kind of smell an upset here with St. Louis with uh, Hull and Herkus, the young goal scorers, as the Wings have home ice against the St. Louis Blues. And then, in a series, it's too bad that this is early, in the Smythe, the Calgary Flames with home ice against the Edmonton Oilers. Of course, uh, all those games up in Alberta, and uh, that is a holy war up in Alberta, in case you weren't clued into it by now. And so, uh, we will have a game every night in the playoffs, and the fun has just begun. The boy, the first round yeah. ended uh, marvelously. Great, great pucks. By the way, the score you saw in the Cleveland-Baltimore game was correct. The information I had in...